Hello, Gary Hernandez here and welcome to King Self-Defense and Master Gary Hernandez. In this video, I want to go over the weather changing. Now, I'm in Florida, so our weather doesn't get that dramatic. It gets cool. When we get down to the 60s, 50s, we start putting on jackets. It's just how us Floridians are. But if you're somewhere in New York, Wisconsin, Colorado, it gets pretty darn cold. I've been to places like that and I've been in the snow. So it gets cold and people wear a lot of winter clothing, nice thick jackets. Now, <clears throat> with that said, when people are out and about, sometimes you want to train in your regular everyday clothes that you walk in. You want to have your cane, <clears throat> you want to have your clothes. Now, it's a nice sunny day. It's in the 70s so it's not bad low 70s and right now sun's beating down pretty good so temperatures getting a little hotter now I happen to be between the buildings at my school so I'm kind of like in an alley so you might be strolling walking through an alley and I'm wearing all this because I want to go over can you handle self self-defense wearing maybe restricted clothing are things going to help you or hurt you now, as I'm walking, I have my sunglasses on because the sun's out. So I have pretty good visibility still. And if you're cutting between two buildings or an alleyway or going between vehicles, or you're walking, let's say, in the woods, and you got your sunglasses because it's really sunny outside, first off, make sure they're clean so you get a good visibility. You can see things moving on your left and right. Your peripheral vision is very good. You don't have dirty glasses on. Now, I'm also wearing a hat, but the hat doesn't restrict any of my visibility. It helps to keep the sun off me unless somebody's jumping from a higher elevation. I don't have to really worry about that. Now, having a, I have my leather jacket on. That does not restrict my movements whatsoever when I'm defending myself. My jacket does it. If you have one that's all bulky and you can barely move, that will restrict your movements. Now, that with, with that being said, if the attacker has one on, some of the techniques may not work as well on the body. Like the common rifle strike to the body to push him off me. It may push him off me. A good bayonet strike, if he's all padded up, it may slow that impact down. Same thing with striking. You know, catch him, he's all bundled up. It's still gonna hurt, but it's got a little bit of padding. It might ease down the power. So then I'm gonna go to my top section. Rifle strike to the face, swing to the face, and basically do a bayonet strike to the face. Now, one thing, even though he's got a jacket, he could be wearing a scarf, he might even be wearing gloves, but still, the wrist area, if he's reaching for me, I'll hammer down bust that wrist. So I'm going to hit that wrist area. I'm going to knock into it. I'm going to cause pain wherever I see an opportunity. Now, wearing glasses. I'm not going to take my glasses off prepared to defend myself. I may not have that time. So they're going to stay on. If they fall off, they fall off. I still go at it. Now the hat can be used to smack him or throw it in his face. Maybe, you know, blind him with it and then strike. So I can go ahead and use the hat as a self-defense determination. So basically, anything I have, I can use it to deter them, distract them, and try to find an opening. Now, obviously you hear music in the background because people like to jam out real loud, but hey. So now think about that. I'm walking, I'm hearing music. Maybe I have my earpiece on and I'm listening to music or maybe I'm talking to somebody. Situational awareness is critical. If I decide to walk down, now if I'm walking with a group of people, I'm in a mall, I'm in an outside mall, indoor mall, walking down the street of my house, and I'm kind of familiar with the area and I'm comfortable and I know everything's what's going on, that's great. But if I happen to start taking a stroll down an alleyway that I'm unfamiliar with, or a stretch of the woods that I'm gonna jog down that I'm unfamiliar with, <clears throat> I may, turn off my radio. I may take my earpiece out so I can hear if someone's creeping up behind me. 
I can hear maybe the, a dog coming up after me or a person running up behind me. So I want to be able to hear that. Now right now, it's pretty loud. All these vehicles are going by up front. I hear trucks. So when you hear noises like that, that might also stop you from hearing other noises. So every now and then when you're walking, you know, look around, check yourself out, look behind you. Situational awareness is the first line of defense. Okay, now practice, when, not just in your schools at home, but practice when you're walking down the street. How fast can you move in restricted clothing? Work it, practice it, make sure you're able to fight in whichever you're wearing because you don't have time to sit there, take off your coat, roll up your sleeves, take off your glasses, you know, take off your hat. I'm sorry, you may want to be a gentleman, but violence, there's nothing gentlemanly about it. It comes at you rough, rugged, and hard. So you need to be ready to fight back rough, rugged, and hard, and savage. So you want to make sure that while you're doing your training, train in clothing that you wear outside. If you work in an office building, and you do carry a cane and you're in a three-piece suit, obviously don't practice at work, they're gonna look at you. But once in a while, put that suit on and check your movement out. Is it restricting you? You know, so what? Someone attacks you, you rip. Okay, let's say you rip your Armani suit. Well, guess what? A thousand dollar Armani is better than a thousand dollar medical bill in the hospital. Rip your clothing and fight if you have to. But practice with not just your martial art dobak or gi, not just whatever shorts and t-shirt you wear when you're training with. Practice in clothes that you wear out in the street. Practice in comfortable clothing. Practice in restricted clothing. Practice in your suit. Ladies, if you wear a dress and you carry a cane, practice in your dress. Men, if that's your thing, well, <laughs> then that's practice in a dress. But seriously, practice in clothing that you're going to be able to wear around town with your cane that you know you can fight in. Again, if you have sunglasses and regular glasses, make sure they're clean and they're not, you know, you can see well. Make sure if you're wearing any kind of hat or something, it's not restricting visibility anywhere. You know, if you have a scarf and it, you know, if you're out in the blizzard, then you're out in the blizzard. But if you got a scarf and you're on like this, still make sure your head can swivel. Can my head swivel? Can I turn my shoulders? Can I look around? Can I come up and do my bayonet strike? My rifle strike? Can I do my low swings, my high swings? Can I switch my hands? Am I able to do all that in the clothing that I'm wearing? Because when somebody attacks you, you're not gonna have an opportunity to do a test run. That is your test run. So. Every time you're wearing something different, grab your cane, take five minutes, move around, see if it works. So that's just a cane tip of the week for you. Hopefully that will help you guys out there. Gary Nance, thank you, and I will see you guys very soon.